Hey everyone, today I want to talk about editing controls of nodes inside of Fusion. So down here I have a rectangle node and up here in the inspector I have a bunch of controls. I can actually go in and I can edit these controls, I can change the names of them, I can add new controls, I can sort of customize these nodes to my liking. And that's what we're going to cover today. But before we really get into it, I got a bit of a, a rant that I want to go on. You can, you can go down into the description, into the time codes and just sort of skip ahead um, if you want. But I was very hesitant to put out this video because the stuff that I'm going to be talking about, in my opinion, is, is pretty half-baked. It's not really fully functional just yet. And that's not a slight on the developers. In my past life, I've been a software developer. I know, I know how challenging it can be to work on features that aren't maybe sort of primary features. And editing controls probably isn't on top of the list for BMD to fix. So I started looking into how to edit controls. I saw that, you know, it's not quite as smooth as maybe maybe I'd like it to be. So I considered just sort of skipping over this, this video and, and going to look at something else. But as it turns out, I actually need this functionality to do one of my other videos that I'm working on. And that video has to do with uh, some transitions that I saw in the, in the Amazon Prime series Homecoming. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on that. So what I was going to do is in that tutorial, sort of the first five minutes or so, I was going to explain how to do these edit controls that would sort of be used later on in that tutorial. But because it's not really fully developed, in my opinion, I've decided to sort of pull it out in kind of a modular fashion. I'm just going to talk about the, these edit controls in isolation. The idea being if functionality is ever sort of fully implemented, I'll just scrap this video and I'll post another one. In any case, rant over. Let's get down to business. Okay, so let's start using this rectangle node as an example here. So up in the inspector over here, we see all the default controls. But let's say we wanted to take width and height, and we wanted to tie those together. So let me take rectangle. I'm going to bring this up to reviewer up here. And right now, when I modify the width and the height, they are independent of each other. So let's say I wanted to tie those two together. I can use expressions to tie those two together, and I can use a technique called pick whipping which is something that's very easy to use and it essentially ties one control to another. So to do that, I can just come into any control that I want to bind to another control. So I want to bind height to the width control. So when I change width, height is just going to go along with it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to put an equal sign. And, and what that does is it adds this expression area down here where I can type a bunch of stuff down, where I can type a bunch of stuff into. It also gives me this little plus button here. And what I can do there is I can just grab this and I can just drag it over to whatever I want to tie this to. So I want to tie height to the width. So I'll come over here and I'll tie it to the width. And I'm holding my mouse button right now. And I let go of my, my mouse button. And in here pops width. Now what happens there is now I take, if I try to try to modify the height, I'm not allowed to anymore because it's tied to something else. And when I modify the width, it modifies those both uh, at once. So now we can get into actually modifying these controls here, because that, that's not what I'm talking about is tying these controls together. That's not really the point of this tutorial. But uh, say I wanted to do something like that to kind of customize one of these mo nodes, and I wanted to take things a little bit further and clean up this interface a little bit. And this is where um, some of the stuff I was talking about in my, my rant a little earlier on kind of comes into play, where things are a little bit clunky as far as what we're able to achieve here. We can do things, we just can't do them as smoothly as I would like to see them. But in any case, let's get into it. So right now, since I can't change this height control, there's not really any need to have this displayed here. So I want to just kind of get rid of it. Uh, right now, there's not a way to essentially delete one of these controls, but I can kind of just hide it somewhere else. So if we take a look at the top here, we have a control section, we have an image section, and we have this settings section here. Okay, so just keep those in mind. So I'm going to come down to my rectangle node, I'm going to right click on this, and I'm going to come up to edit controls. That brings up this dialog here, and this is where I have the majority of my beef with. This is this dialog here is not full and complete. But let's go through what it has to offer anyway. So up here in the top left, we have a new control. This is if we wanted to add a new control onto here, and we're going to go through that in a minute. But right now, I want to talk about just modifying an existing one. So to do that, we come down to this ID here. And this is a drop down and it brings up a whole host of options and these all correspond to the controls that you would see over here. They are not in any order, they're not in alphabetical order, they're just kind of there and you kind of got to go and, and find what you're looking for. So I just happen to scroll to the right place where we have our center width and our, and our height right here. So what I want to do is, is, this, is, is select this height because what we want to do is, is kind of get this off this main page. Now we see right now it's on this controls page here. We want to move it to this user page. 
This user page doesn't exist right now until we add something on. So as soon as I click OK, since by default this is selected to, to be the user page, it doesn't automatically choose the one that it's already on. It always defaults to the user page. Well, let's just do it and I'll show you what happens. I'm going to explain all this other stuff in a little bit, but for right now, all I'm doing is I'm taking the existing control, height, and I'm essentially changing it to this user page. So I click OK, take a look at this, boom, it's gone. And if you look up here now, we have uh, another option that's kind of snuck in between here called user. And I go over there and there's our height. And again, we can't really do anything with that, but we could modify this expression. So for a very quick example, if I wanted to go divided by two, that would essentially take the, the, the value of the width and divide it by two, but we're just gonna keep it sort of a, a, a constant one-to-one -one right now. So again, I can't change that, but if I come back to my main uh, controls page here, um, it's a little bit cleaner. I have this width right now, right? But the width, that doesn't really make any sense anymore because it's not the width, it's the width and the height. So maybe if I wanted to change the text of this to size, for example, that might make a little more sense. So, okay, I wanna just change one of these values here so I can come back to edit controls. I can find my width control now. That's right here. And I'm just gonna change the name up here to size. Now, one of the things that doesn't work very well with this dialog here is how it groups things. You don't really have much say in where things get ordered. Anytime you add a new control or even modify an existing one, it's gonna drop to the bottom here. There is this little group control here. I have not figured this one out. I don't think it's working properly because there's no way to differentiate between this sort of grouping up here and this grouping down here. So in any case, things are always just gonna go down to the bottom. So here I'm defaulting again to the user page. I don't wanna go on users, I wanna to go to controls because that's where it is now. And what's gonna happen basically when I press okay is this width is gonna change its name to size and it's gonna come down to the bottom here. So let's just go do that. There we go. So now we have size down at the bottom. But if I grab the size, I can sort of move it up and down and we're all good. If I, if I were to bring in a new rectangle node, it's set back to the defaults though. Okay, so that's all well and good. Now I have this modified, this rectangle. I have my size set up here. I want to control C and control V. So I'm just uh, creating a copy of that. I'm just gonna get rid of that connector there. When I create a copy of that, it's gonna bring over my custom controls that I modified. So I'll put this one up over here on this viewer here, and I'm gonna move the mask down to the bottom right here. So you can also add controls to a group, and it's adding controls to a group that I actually want to do for my next tutorial. So let's just demonstrate that here. So I'll select what I wanna put in my group here. I'm gonna go Control G to group. This is defaulted to group one. I'm gonna press F2 to change the name of this and I'm gonna call it masks. Now what I can do, I can treat this in the same way. Right now, if you look up here, it doesn't really have much in, in terms of controls, but I can add a new control to this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new control, which is essentially a size slider that I'm gonna tie the two internal rectangles to. So all I have to do is change one slider on this top level node and it's gonna change the two masks on the bottom nodes. So let's, let's see how we can do that. So here we would right click on masks and I would go edit controls. So adding a new control, all I wanna do here is just type a new name in here and I'm gonna call this size. So it's the same name as the size inside the rectangles here, but it's okay because I can denote the, the group size by masks.size and these ones here would be rectangle1.size and, and so on and so forth. So I'd like this to be a number here I want to put this on the common page. I want my input control here. I'm going to, I'm going to be picking a slider. So a slider is, uh, you'll see what it looks like in a second, but it's just that sort of typical control that you would, you would normally see where you can slide a value back and forth. I want to set up my ranges and stuff up here. So this is a size control. So the default size control was zero to one. So I'm going to put that as zero to one. So these are going to show up as the default values on the slider control. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now we also have this down here called allowed. This is going to set the default range, but this here is going to specify if I want to go, if I want to type in a number manually to go a little bit higher, I can. So for example, I'm going to keep the lower end at zero, but on this maximum one here, I'm just going to put it at two. My default value here, I'll put it 0.5. I don't want it to be an integer because I want to have decimal values or allow decimal values. 
I'm not going to enter anything inside center or steps. I'm just going to accept the default values. And down here, I want to make sure this checkbox is set to on here so I can animate this particular parameter if I choose to. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. So down here, we see size show up. And we see this little guy up here. So this means we can animate it. We can see our, so this is a slider essentially. So I go up to the top value and I set it to one and down at the bottom, we set that to zero. Now we set the maximum possible value here to, to a two. So if I come up here and I push five, it's only gonna allow me to put up to two. And that changes the sort of scale of the slider, right? One is now in the middle, two is up top. In any case, so right now we move the size. This doesn't really do anything. So the next step is to take the size parameters within these rectangle nodes and tie them up to the group level. So let's do that. So first we're going we're gonna to click on masks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pin this here. And pinning this to the inspector means no matter which I choose, if I choose media out, for example, masks is still going to show up. It's still pinned there. You can also do multi-selects. If I wanted to select two rectangles, for example, now I see these two rectangles, plus I also see the masks because masks is pinned right here. But in any case, so I'm gonna pick rectangle one. Rectangle one, now we have our size control down here. So there's the size control. This is for the rectangle. And also down here is our masks. We also have this size control down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that same pick whip technique. So I want this here to be tied to this. So I always put my expression in the parameter that I wanna be controlled. I don't want to move this anymore. I'm giving up the ability to control this. So I'll put equals in here, bring up this little guy. And now I can do this pick whipping across uh, nodes. I just don't have to grab stuff from in this node, but because I pinned this, I can grab something from over here. So I'm going to grab this value here. So there we go. And we see it show up here as masks.size, which is the group name dot parameter name. So I can just type this in manually. I don't have to sort of drag and grab things, but that's just a quick way to do it. And just for fun, let's do the same thing to this rectangle down here. Um, instead of putting an equal sign in here, I'm just going to right click anywhere on this control here and I'm going to go expression. That brings up the same thing here. That brings up this box here. So now I want to just get rid of these numbers here and do the same thing. I can also just type that in directly now that I know what I'm looking for. And essentially what that allows me to do now is here's my group node called masks. So when I select masks, I'm going to collapse this now. So I have this masks group come up here to size. And now I control both of those masks through this single mask node, which is a group. Now where things can get a little bit difficult here is sort of modifying things. Once you make a group, you're kind of stuck. If I wanted to you know, do a bunch of editing within this group and I wanted to un undo something. So if I were to, for example, undo this group and then group things back, well, I've, I've lost that, right? Now let's say I really love this new masks group that I created and I want to access it through my add tools menu. So all I have to do to save it is right click on this, go to settings and go save as. Now you can take a note of the path that we have up here. Essentially it's going to put you inside this fusion settings folder. You want to go up one level essentially and there's going to be this macros folder here. That's where you want to go into this macros folder and you just want to save it in there. We don't have to restart the software. I can simply right click, add tools. There's a macro setting down here. I come down to masks, boom, masks one, double click on it, off we go. I can take this rectangle one and two over here, I collapse this back down. Up here is our size control and we're good to go. And there's a bunch of other control types that you can kind of play around with. There's check boxes, there's drop downs, there's uh, this range control, a range control would be something like one of these here where you have kind of things on, on two sides that you can kind of play with. So that's all I really wanted to cover for today. And again, I, I kind of apologize for this video because it's, it's to me, this is a, a temporary video just until things uh, hopefully get a little bit better um, as far as functionality here, because this type of stuff, um, it's the kind of thing that people would use if it's easy to use and they won't use if it's difficult. And right now it's kind of difficult and clunky to use. So I would imagine a lot of people avoid it. If at some point in the future, they kind of clean the interface around this type of functionality up, I think there's a lot of value that we can kind of get out of it. I'm doing some transitions that you could kind of do in a brute force method, but I want to make things a little more elegant. And that elegance kind of comes from being able to add these sort of custom controls to bring things up 
to a bit of a higher level so you can kind of customize things a little bit better. But I'll cover that all in the next tutorial. Thanks again so much for checking this out, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.